What would you say are the key differences between the 510K and PMA pathways in terms of their advantages and disadvantages? Well, to begin with, with respect to 510Ks, there are some advantages um, to a company. For example, uh, it's an efficient way to get a product to market that does not present a significant risk, of course, uh, where a PMA might be required. Uh, additionally, there's no requirement for post-market studies that, that are applied to 510K uh, clearances. Um, usually, it's a simpler and less expensive application that needs to be submitted to FDA, even though it may or may not require clinical data. There's no pre-clearance inspection. Uh, there's less oversight for modifications, which can be a very important consideration. There's no panel review um, for virtually all 510Ks. So all of those things are benefits to the 510K system. Uh, on the other hand, there are a few uh, negatives as well. Uh, the decision is based on substantial equivalence, and that can limit what you can say about your product compared to other devices. Uh, it's easier for another company com to come along and make a uh, Me Too submission with respect to your product. Uh, the 510K itself, because it often doesn't require clinical data or more limited clinical data, may not have enough information associated with it uh, of the type that, that users, clinicians, would like to see. And there's no product liability protection associated with a 510K clearance. Uh, with respect to PMAs, the, the pros for a PMA include the fact that um, you're proving clinical utility and outcomes, which uh, is something that the user community, clinician community, would like to see. Uh, and FDA is making a finding that the product is safe and effective, and you can make that claim in your uh, marketing materials. In effect, the PMA is a regulatory license, so it's harder for other companies to come along and copy or submit a Me Too version of your product. And the Supreme Court has created product liability protection for devices that have gone through the PMA process. Uh, on the other hand, the, uh, the PMA takes a longer time to get through the FDA. Uh, it usually requires a bigger study. Uh, application fees are higher. Um, the type of requirements when you're uh, changing the product are more uh, rigorous for a PMA. The type of data and information that goes into a PMA um, is significantly more um, than what's required for a 510K. Um, higher statistical hurdles, for example, more information about uh, preclinical information, things of that sort. Uh, so that makes the overall pathway to market um, more time consuming and more expensive. Also, for PMA devices, FDA must conduct a QSR inspection prior to granting approval to the product, and there are oftentimes more follow-on requirements associated with a PMA as well.